Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and welcome to another PCB breakdown. We haven't done these in ages, have we? It's like, I think it's like more than a week at this point since the last one. Anyway, these are back. I haven't forgotten to do these. It's just been busy with other things, and this kept sort of getting delayed until we're doing it now. So this right here is the RX 570 Pulse uh, from Sapphire. The picture is from Tech Power Up. There's a accreditation on the video, so if you would like to check out their review, you can, uh, of the card. And props to them for, uh, you know, providing high-res images like this. Um, I do believe this PCB is also used on the 580 Pulse, um, so Sapphire recycles it for both of those cards because they are pin uh The BGA is compatible between those two, between the Polaris cards, so Polaris 10 uh, cards. So anyway, let's get on with the actual breakdown well the vrm so first things first this right here and and they cram the capacitors into like they're technically part of the v core vrm the problem i have with highlighting them is if i highlight some of the capacitors and not the rest then it's like not fair so yeah that there is the v core vrm so that powers that's going to affect uh, core overclocking and, you know, uh, voltage ranges you can run. Uh, core overclocking, voltage ranges, what else was it? I have, I, wait. I haven't done these in so long, I don't remember what I usually do. Anyway, this supplies, oh yeah, this supplies the bulk of the power for the GPU, which is why it's kind of bigger than all the other VRMs on this. Uh, above that, we find what might be the auxiliary or the memory VRM. I'm not sure, uh, because there's an identical VRM right on the other side. I mean, it's not identical in, in terms of layout, but it uses the same voltage controller and same MOSFETs. So these two are literally the same thing, and they are either one of them is the auxiliary, and one of them is the memory VRM. Memory VRM takes care of all the GDDR5 chips, uh, the auxiliary VRM takes care of the memory controller, which is sort of... I'm not actually sure where exactly on the die it is, but it's going to be something like the, the outer edges of the GPU die. Um, so yeah, that's all the VRMs you have on the car. Let's take a closer look at what they're actually made up of. So the V-Core VRM here is using the same voltage controller uh, as the Nitro... Uh, uh, the RX 580 Nitro. And if there's a 570 Nitro, it's also using the same voltage controller. And that is a on-semiconductor uh, NCP81022. This is a rather... It, it's not the smartest voltage controller, but it isn't uh, completely useless. It goes from 240 to 1 megahertz switching frequency. It has per-phase current sense, uh, you know, the usual kind of equipment for a modern uh, voltage controller. It does four plus one phases, and here it is running in just four phase mode. There is a separate voltage controller sort of in this area for this VRM, and then this here is powering, uh, taking care of that VRM. So this right here only deals with the V-Core VRM. It is running in four phase mode. There's no doubling anywhere on this card. Um, and yeah, so... That's how the card is controlled. This thing is really easy to disable power con uh, power monitoring on. Like, really, really easy to make this thing uh, not read power. Hard mod it. It's very easy as well. Uh, though, hard modding an RX series card is kind of pointless considering how he easy it is to, uh, you know, control the voltage from software. So, that's kind of a waste. Same goes for the power limit, you can tweak that in the BIOS, and on this card you really wouldn't want to blow out the power limit anyway because of what the V-Core VRM actually is. So I've already said it's a 1, 2, 3, 4 phase VRM design, and it's using um, Vichy Semiconductor uh, SIC632 power stages. I'm not sure if it's the A variant or not, it's quite hard to see. Either way, these are 50 amp power stages, and there's four of them. So your V-Core VRM right here has a maximum current capability of 200 amps. 
which is, it's acceptable for an uh, RX 570 and an RX 580, actually. You can overclock on this just fine. Um, it is a lot worse than some of the other RX 580s and RX 480s. You can, uh, I mean, for it, yeah, it's actually worse than four, many 480s. Ma most 580s are better than this. This is very much a sort of budget card by Sapphire standards. Like, it's the down-costed version of a 580, uh, you know, down-costed PCB for Polaris 10, or wait, is, is Polaris getting a new revision name? I don't care any longer. It's still, it's basically a five, uh, 470 slash 480, depending on which, if it's a 570 or a 580. So yeah, the V-Core VRM can do up to 200 amps. And so if you're overclocking this card, I recommend staying below 1.25 volts. Um, that's 200 amps average at 125 degrees centigrade. The problem is, um, it's, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be great. Uh, the VRM at that kind of current load is gonna actually put out about 36 watts of heat, which isn't atrocious, that's actually pretty efficient. Um, but you can't really exceed that, and an RX 480, um, RX 480s and 580s are relatively power hungry, so if you were, like, benching the card at, like, 1.35 volts or something, this VRM would probably not be super pleased with that. Um, and there is potential that if you're not cooling it great, it might die. But for daily usage, 1.25, 1.2 to 1.25 volts, you're perfectly fine, actually. Um, because the card will only pull about 100 and sort of, well, 160 to sort of 200 amps, depending on how leaky your chip is. There's still a lot of variance. Uh, well, on Polaris, there is a lot of power consumption variance, just depending on the manufacturing quality. So, you know, as long as you stay below that 200 amps uh, average current draw figure, you're fine. It can, the VRM will survive short-term small spikes above 200 amps just fine. It's just oh, average, you don't really want to be exceeding that. Um... No, I'm pretty sure you'll actually hit the power limit before you hit that average 200 amp uh, current draw figure. So, you know, nothing to really worry about unless you're modding the BIOS. Now, so that's the V-Core VRM. And yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for benchmarking. I wouldn't run it on liquid nitrogen, but for air cooling, uh, sure, go right ahead. For water cooling, you'll probably be fine, but I think getting water cooling on a card like this is a bit of a waste. Um, I would generally recommend go for a better card first and then go for the water cooling rather than water cool something like this so yeah so with that out of the way um let's move on to the auxiliary and the memory vrm both of these are made up of three mosfets we have one high side fat one, two low side fats all three of these mosfets are the same on semi uh 4C10N series MOSFETs. You can just Google that. It'll give you the right data sheet. Um, these aren't great. These are kind of budget, sort of more uh, value-oriented MOSFETs. Uh, they are very popular because of that, but they're not that great in terms of power, uh, power throughput. So what you end up with is the maximum power throughput on these VRMs is sort of 30 amps maximum with 9 watts of heat dissipation. That's assuming 125 degrees uh, 25 degrees centigrade operating temperature, and that's wrong. Um, and also 1.5 volts output voltage. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, 1.5 volts, 300 kilohertz, 30 amps, 125 degrees. You're fine on this. Uh, it will put out 9 watts of heat. And normally, these VRMs shouldn't really exceed 20 amps of current output. Um, because the entire memory subsystem on, on an RX 48 uh, on the Polaris cards pulls about 40 to 50 watts. So, you know, you have sort of 30 watts on memory and then another 10 to 50, you know, 30 to 35 watts on memory and then another 10 to 15 watts on the memory controller itself. So really, neither of these is a problem. If you were to overvault them, then yeah, uh, the these might actually hit that 30 amp current figure and there is no heat sink on these like the memory uh, the v core vrm does have a heat sink right here the memory vrm is just cooled by whatever airflow it can get so that's really not great so if you wanted to overvolt the memory um this vrm might not 
you might want to sort of figure out how to monitor the VRM, te uh, the memory VRM temperature, because as far as I'm aware, it doesn't actually have any kind of temperature sensors either. Uh, and it is not far from not, you know, not surviving. So the other thing is, though, that RX 480s didn't scale with memory voltage at all. It didn't do anything. The bottleneck on all of those cards was the memory controller itself. So you might be like, okay, let's overvolt the memory controller. Well, that's a great idea, except for the part where that's exactly how I killed uh, my best RX 480. So overvolting, and it also still didn't really do much for memory overclocking anyway. So basically, these VRMs are just fine. Um, I, they're not great, but they're not going to hold you back because, quite frankly, you're going to be held back by the limits of the silicon of Polaris before you're going to actually run into issues with either of those VRMs. And the V-Core VRM here is just fine. So for a daily card, as is, there's really no problem with getting this. Um, you know, if you just want to... Though, you'll have to probably read an actual review to figure out if the cooler on this thing is any good. Because that is another thing that sort of factors into overclocking a any of the Polaris cards. So, yeah. Uh, that sort of wraps up the different VRMs and how I feel about it for overclocking. Another interesting feature that this PCB has is it has fuses on all of the 12 volt inputs. Th these are 10 amp fuses. So you're limited on the PCIe slot for to 120 watts, which is a lot more than a PCIe, which is about twice what a PCIe slot is specced to do. But that spec is actually very, very conservative and is sort of taken as a worst case scenario. So unless your PCIe slot is really, really dirty or something, uh, it should, like, this fuse, um, well, it probably won't protect your PCIe slot. The bigger problem is, generally, with high power draw GPUs on PCIe slots, is you're not so much going to damage your PCIe slot, it's way more likely that you're going to end up burning out your 24 pin, because your 24 pin only has two lines for 12 volts in it. And those two lines for 12 volts have to provide all of the 12 volts on your motherboard that aren't the v VRMs for the CPU and possibly the memory. So if you're thinking of running multiple of the, multiple of this card in Crossfire, this thing might be able to, like, well, actually it shouldn't be because the V-Core VRM is almost certainly entirely hooked up to the 8-pin. But yeah, th this 10-amp fuse just sort of doesn't do anything. Uh, safety-wise, as far as I'm concerned. Now, on the 8-pin itself, you have two 10-amp fuses. So the 8-pin is fused for 240 watts, which is a reasonable, like, that's a reasonable value for an 8-pin. That's really not a problem. I know they're spec'd for 150, but they can take a lot more in reality. And yeah, so 240 amps uh, fuse on there. These, like, if you blow out the power limit on this card, then this will actually probably protect your VRM from any doing from you doing anything particularly stupid. Um, because if you exceed that 240 40 watt limit of these two fuses, you've probably exceeded the power limit of uh, the current limit and the volt. Like, yeah, you've exceeded the current limit of the VRM on the GPU core. And replacing these fuses, even though it's technically like it's a it's difficult. Yeah, you'll need to get a soldering iron, and it's not the easiest repair to do. It's certainly a lot better than having to replace the entire V-Core VRM. Uh, well, trying to replace any part of the V-Core VRM, depending on how it failed, it might be completely unsalvageable. So, yeah, the fuses on the 8-pin are, in my opinion, a pretty nice feature to have. Though the fuse on the PCIe slot kind of doesn't really do anything. Um, so, yeah, that's it for this PCB breakdown. Um, the card's fine. If you have it, don't worry about it. If you don't have it and are considering it, sure, go ahead. Um, if you want to get a card for, you know, benchmarking, fire strike, and like really, really pushing Polaris beyond like 1500 megahertz or something, uh, this is probably not the card for you just because the VCore VRM isn't that great. But for daily gaming, sure, go right ahead. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below with any questions or anything sort of, uh, yeah, any questions you may have or any criticisms or whatever else. And if you would like to support what I do here at Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon, a PayPal, and a there's shirts, and you can find that all down in the description below. 
So that's it for this video, and see you next time.